Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Nithya, and I'm a PhD three student in Nihal Winkers lab. So today I'll be talking on transcriptomic changes in avian brain and periphery during acute inflammation. Uh, so previous studies have shown that RNA-seq have provided us like more information on gene expression during inflammation, neuroinflammation and inflammation. So neuroinflammation is also linked to serious kind of disorders and health problems like depression. And we also know, know that some of the pro-inflammatory cytokines are able to cross the blood brain barrier and induce neuroinflammation. But most of these studies are either limited to mice or a few are done in chicken. So the relevance of the study is that uh, we were also do, interested in this kind of study, but in a more cognitively advanced organism. So we have the zebra finch. Uh, we know that zebra finch is a common pet pasturine and it is cognitively advanced. It is also due, uh, very diverse and also the lineage is as old as a mammalian. Uh, and we can see this bird in different kind of environmental niches. But uh, when we compare to the immunological research done in this field, it is more or less lesser. And to a benefit, we have the genome sequence of the zebra finch. So what was the main aim of this study was for understanding uh, the peripheral inflammation caused in a zebra finch during LPS injection. And if it is able to produce any kind of, or any gene expression changes in the pro-inflammatory cytokines. And if there is any changes, whether this pro-inflammatory cytokine is able to induce any kind of neuroinflammation. So, the experimental protocol was we had 24 male zebra finch bird, which we uh, categorized into two groups. Uh, we had 12 treatment bird and 12 control bird. And in 12 control bird, uh, uh, in, sorry, in 12 treatment man birds, uh, first we uh, injected abdominally injected the LPS, and also the same birds received an LPS in the left wing. And after 24 hours, the birds were atomized. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so after the ethanization, the tissues were collected, the RNA was extracted, and uh, the sequencing was done using Illumina libraries, and the bioinformatics analysis was done. Uh, but we had a good, or uh, we had a question like, when we have a limited budget, whether we should go for a deep sequencing with few individuals, or we go for a three prime end sequencing with all the individuals. So, we decided to give a try with. Uh, the both approaches. So first we went for the classical mRNA sequencing. So in this, uh, we done the sequencing of 18 skin samples. So which, uh, so here you can see, we have the treatment birds and uh, we have injected this wing. So this is the uh, treatment wing of the treatment bird. And this is the control wing of the treatment bird. And here we have the control wing of the control bird. So we had three kinds of skin tissues. So we sequenced from among them, we sequenced uh, six, uh, six tissues from the control wing of the treatment, six from the treatment treatment, and six from the control control. And for the uh, next approach, which is the QuantSeq, uh, we sequenced all the skin samples from the treatment wing of the treatment bird and control wing of the control bird. And additional to that, we also sequence the 24 brain samples also. Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, we uh, sequence both uh, the uh, libraries in the Illumina high seek and I use two kinds of uh, pipelines. One is a background pipeline and other is the blue bee pipeline. So uh, you can see here the uh, quant six are generated from the three prime end of the sequence and the, you know, the whole mRNA is the whole uh, transfer to be there. And after the analysis, uh, when we see the mRNA seq result, since I told we had three different tissues of the skin, when we compared it uh, 
the three approaches. For the first approach, which is the control skin of the control bird with the treatment skin of the treatment bird, we had 371 differentially expressed genes. And this comparison is similar to of what we have for the quancy. But for our surprise or shock, we couldn't find any kind of pro-inflammatory cytokines differentially expressed. And we only got a very few, like less than 10 immune genes, which is differentially expressed. And for the rest of the comparisons also, we couldn't find any kind of pro-inflammatory genes, which is differentially expressed. Uh, but uh, when we uh, did the analysis of the quant uh, when we saw the results for the brain, unfortunately, we had only five differentially expressed genes, but we saw the upregulation of ACCORD1, which is all, also known as the ARG, IRG1, which is uh, involved in the interconnect production and also antigen presentation. And later study, which was just done in last year, showed us that the abdominal ACCORD1 expression is also a factor in neurodegenerative diseases and other immune-related uh, uh, disformalities. So, and more about this brain and related parts, my colleague Eleni, Eleni will be talking in her next talk. So when we move to the skin result for the quantic, even though we got less differentially expressed genes, we got the upregulation of IL-1 beta, CL6, 8, and other immune genes. So you can see the PCA plot and the volcano plot here. So we decided to see what are the common genes between the quantic and mRNA-seq. To our surprise, there are very few genes which are common between these two. And when I checked for the pathways, which were uh, significant in all these comparisons, uh, we couldn't find much pathways which were very common. And most of the pathways were different from what we have from the quantic. And so now we are doing the RTQPCR validation. And for four genes, we have completed that. And for the rest, it is still ongoing. And so to summarize uh, the, the, uh, the comparison, we had a very few gene overlap between the quantic and the mRNA-C. Uh, when we see the cost, uh, when, uh, for one sample for the library preparation and sequencing, it costed uh, 103 euros for quantic, but for the similar one, for the mRNA-C, it was 546 euros. We got relatively less differentially expressed gene in the quantic, and more differentially expressed gene in the mrna seq But uh, QANSIC identified higher expression of the pro-inflammatory and immune genes. Uh, but mrna seq unfortunately, we couldn't get any pro-inflammatory cytokines or very low expression of immune genes. We were able to sequence a lot of samples uh, because of the less sequencing cost. But here in the mrna seq we could only sequence very few because of the high sequencing cost. And we uh, received almost uh, 3 billion reads from the quantity. And for the mrna seq we had approximately 25 billion reads. So to conclude or to summarize, like uh, we, we feel that if you only have to do some kind of differential gene expression analysis, maybe you can try for the quantity, which can give you a, not better, but which can give you at least an idea about what genes are differentially expressed. Uh, other than going for this mrna seq maybe it and if you have a low budget also it can be helpful for you so uh, i would like to thank my supervisor michael winkler and my teammates and all our collaborators and the, for and for the fundings i received for uh, for this analysis and i would like to thank all of you also for your attention and maybe uh, i can take some questions thank you everyone Yes, wonderful. So the time for questions. I will look into the chat. Are there any questions? Okay, Scott has question. Please go on. Uh, 